Nation of Fit and 10, welcome to day 42, the end of week six and entering, starting tomorrow, the final four weeks of this challenge. The final, still 40%, so still a big amount, but we are at that 28 day mark, which is kind of crazy, right? We're really sort of on the downhill right now. But of course, you are in the best position you can be in because as I mentioned in a previous video, there are several things that are working towards helping you to get even better results today than you would otherwise have had in the beginning. Of course, the number one of those is experience. You all have a much better idea of what to do in this challenge, including uh, your diet, which I'm gonna really encourage you to set some benchmarks unless you're getting your numbers near perfect. If near perfect to me would be getting within 5% of all your macros on a daily basis. But I know a lot of you are not quite there. You might be close. You might have some days where you're there, but maybe not every single day. So I'm gonna really encourage you to set some baseline standards for your macros that you are going to hit every single day. And then we're gonna to try to improve upon that every week. Everything makes a difference. This will make a huge difference, trust me. Yesterday, I talked about fats, good fats, bad fats. And generally speaking, just to recap here, generally speaking, when we talk about these quote, healthier fats, we're talking generally about monounsaturated and saturated fats. Most fats, are a mixture of, of, uh, of actually of, of all three, mono, uh, excuse me, saturated, monounsaturated, and polyunsaturated. Of course, we want to avoid those fats that are primarily polyunsaturated with the exception of fish oil. That would be the one polyunsaturated fat that we do really want to consume. Of course, we don't need a lot of fish oil per day. We really just need that EPA and DHA from that fish oil. And uh, again, uh, for myself, in terms of fish oil, I am taking one tablespoon per day, which is about 13 grams of fish oil. And not all of that's polyunsaturated, of course. So getting a small amount of polyunsaturated. Fish oil is the one that I'm gonna really encourage you to have. You probably know this by now because I've talked about it in previous videos. The interesting thing to note though with these fats is that a lot of these saturated monounsaturated fats are Fats that come from, or I should say, excuse me, let me reverse that. A lot of the foods that we've eaten for centuries, centuries, maybe even thousands of years, of course, this is really gonna depend on where you come from as well, are typically monounsaturated and or, and or saturated. Now, let's say and saturated because they're always a mix. Like animal fats, for instance, those are a high amount of saturated and high amount of monounsaturated. Or things like avocado. Or things like uh, uh, coconut. Coconut oil. And coconut oil is actually mainly saturated. Uh, so just something to kind of note here. A lot of these polyunsaturated fats are coming from typically seed oils or corn oil. And it's very, it's, it's a very arduous process. Well, maybe it's not so much arduous, but relatively speaking to the other fats that we have in the diet, it's a more arduous process in order to extract the fats out from these uh, different uh, food items. So I'm gonna highly encourage you to stick with the quote, good fats. So just to recap here, some of these good fats, real whole butter, uh, excuse me, uh, grass-fed butter, coconut oil, ghee, um, olive oil, avocado oil, walnut oil, macadamia nut oil, etc. Okay, flaxseed oil. Question that I had that I forgot to answer and uh, my apologies to this person. Uh, this was a personal question that came in via Slack and I had mentioned this person, listen, don't, you know, stay away from flavored yogurt. And she asked me why, why, why not flavored yogurt? What's the problem with flavored yogurt? 
unless you're eating yogurt that is naturally flavored and then has some sort of sweetener in there, some sort of non-sugar based sweetener, uh, like an artificial sweetener perhaps. I've never seen it with stevia, so maybe something like aspartame or something. Unless, unless you're eating that, the flavored yogurts are highly sugar based. So the difference between that and say unflavored yogurt is you're getting much more protein per serving, whatever the serving size is. The other aspect of this is, is you might say, well, I need to get carbs. So what just, I gotta have some carbs in my diet. So why not just have some flavored yogurt? I'm just getting some carbs and I need those carbs. The thing is, is that we really want to have foods that we're getting the most bang for your buck. It's, it's not just about macros. It's about the types of macros. What else comes along with those macros? So I can have glucose fructose in, excuse me, glucose fructose as a sweetener in the yogurt, or I could have some real fruit, which is going to have things like fiber and phytonutrients and vitamins and minerals, etc. So we're getting a lot more out of that. And not to mention that glucose fructose is really not a sugar that you want to be consuming, right? Not all, not all carbohydrates are completely identical, of course. So when it comes to something like yogurt, again, we want to sweeten this with, you could even, you know, use honey. Honey would be much better because we're getting some of those natural nutrients in there. Okay, let's get to the message of the day. On this day 42, unbelievable. The end of week six. And you've heard me talk about this before. Really, those that succeed are those that never give up, right? That's actually not the quote. The quote is this, success is not final. Failure is not fatal. It's the courage to continue that counts. It's the, it's the, it's the, this ongoing every day, hammering away, not giving up persistency, 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 persistency wins. If you look at anybody who's successful in any endeavor with, with a, a small amount of outliers out there, if you look at any great thing that's been achieved, it's always been through persistency. Always. People always run up against speed bumps or walls or signs which you may interpret to be the fact that you're not capable of, of doing what you're setting out to do. But this is all just par for the course. This is all just par for the course, especially when we're working towards something that is of you know, great stress to us, right? It has always been something that's been hard for us to, to do. So any great endeavor that you go into, you have to expect that you're going to encounter many signs that tell you, you are not, you are not made to do this. You are not, you're not, you're not, forget about it, just give up. But no, that's just par for the course. And that's what virtually everybody goes through. It's those that choose to remain ignorant to it and just continue, right? Ignorance is bliss in many ways. Success is not final. Failure is not fatal. It's the courage to keep going, right? It's the courage to continue that counts. Positive energy, positive eyes, believe in yourself for the love of God, give some gratitude, and I will talk to you all tomorrow.